welcome to my kitchen and a new episode of the holidays are coming. The holidays are coming the day after tomorrow because today is 23rd of December and I promised you I would show you how I make my antipasto platter. I really kind of wanted to get to this a little sooner in the day but at least I'm getting it done before I go to bed and I am going to upload this today so hopefully you'll see it in time. If you want to make something similar you'll be able to run to the store on a crazy Christmas Eve and uh, get some of the things that are your favorites to put on your antipasto platter. What I do want to say is, you've seen me make the roasted olives, the roasted garlic, the marinated mushrooms, the marinated artichokes, and um, really an antipasto isn't a recipe as much as it's a construction. It's it putting together the things that you love the most from a selection of, you know, pickled items and roasted items and a little bit of salty and a little bit of sour and some a selection of smoked and cured meats. And really, it's whatever you like. You make antipasto the way you want it. You don't put things on it you don't like. What sense would that make, right? But typically antipasto has some cheese, some some meats, and some pickled vegetables, um, and you go from there. So, what I'm going to show you now is a lot of the things that I like to put on here. Now, I do have one thing I am missing though. So, I'm okay, so what we have here, I have a selection and I didn't buy, really, I didn't buy a whole lot. We're not going to put all of this on there, but there's some salami and some chorizo, some calabrese salami, some sweet capicola, and some prosciutto. And then I also have some turkey pepperoni because my dad will eat that. Um, I wouldn't usually buy pepperoni made from turkey, but my dad um, likes that, so I'm putting that on there. I also have some vento salami, which is a little spicy. I have some um, mozzarella and prosciutto and basil roll-up. We're going to slice this and it makes a nice presentation. And then over here, I've got my marinated artichokes and mushrooms over there in the jar. But then I have these prepared items that I buy. You know, roasted red peppers. I always have these in my fridge. Sweet cherry peppers. And you know, you can put pepperoncini on here, whatever you like. And I always put some jardinetta on here. And this is a marinated... It's a pickled vegetable. There's carrots and celery, cauliflower, there's pickled cucumber in there, and it's fantastic. And it's a little bit spicy, and it's really, really yummy. So, I got out a couple of my big platters, and this is one of the largest platters I have. It's a Portuguese platter, and I just love it. And that's what we're going to construct it on. So, the first thing that I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to make my bocconcini salad. Um, let's see, does this have a flap on it? Yes. I was going to say, if nothing else, they could have it for New Year's. You can make this perfect for New Year's. New Year's. Oh, perfect pickup for your, you know, friends and family. And I'll show you what this is. This is called mozzarella pearls. You can also find bocconcini, um, in a tub. And it's, they're packed in a way. And I'll show you what this is. These are little mozzarella balls. Okay, so I'm just going to break these up into their the little nugget, the little pearls. They're called mozzarella pearls. You're going to find them. They're going to be called bocconcini. They're going to be called any number of things, but they're basically little tiny balls of mozzarella. And a lot of times, and much times, I many times I prefer to have them in um, mm -hmm, in the brine, and then I drain them. And then I have some great tomatoes here. And a lot of times, also the bocconcini. I need a larger bowl. You always do. I know. Um, the bocconcini are oftentimes the same size as the grape tomatoes. If you have cherry tomatoes, I would suggest um, cutting them in half. But I would do that right before. So I'm not cutting these in half. I'm just going to do them together like this. And then this couldn't be any more easy. So what I'm going to do is I have a little fresh basil here. And pull a couple of the leaves off. We use four large leaves of basil here. I'm going to move some of this out of the way. Now we're going to make a chiffonade. So what you want to do, and that's just a fancy name 
for cutting into ribbons. You know, if you're a froofy French chef, you chiffonade the basil. So you see what I'm doing? I laid the basil flat, like so. And then we're going to roll it up like a cigar. In a nice, tight little bundle. You can take your knife and cut ribbons, really skinny ribbons. Okay, can you see what they look like? They look just like ribbons, but that's a chiffonade. And that's just about the amount you want, I'd say, a tablespoon, two tablespoons of fresh basil. You can do this with dry basil. You can just throw in a tablespoon of Italian seasoning if you like. It doesn't matter. You can throw in some oregano. You can throw in some fresh garlic. I'm not doing that because we've got a lot of garlic and a lot of other things. So, with some fresh pepper. And you have to have sea salt in here. And then the next and final thing is a good glug of olive oil. Now I am going to grab a tablespoon. And you're just going to coat everything with the olive oil. And when we get ready to eat this tomorrow, it's going to be absolutely wonderful. The longer it's, you don't want it to sit too long, overnight is going to be just fine. By the time I eat this tomorrow, it'll be perfect. I wouldn't make this like three days ahead of time, absolutely not, because the mozzarella is going to just get too mushy. Remember, you're dealing with a fresh dairy product when you buy this mozzarella cheese, and it's not, um, it's not dry at all. So it's going to kind of break down in that olive oil, but that's exactly where we want it. So I'm going to set this aside, and then I'm going to bring over my ginormous plate. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my prosciutto. And you can go to the deli and have them cut it. Prosciutto is very expensive. It's anywhere from... 15 to 25 dollars a pound and I like it super thin um, this package was $3.99 and I think there's probably six to eight slices here uh, this is all I want prosciutto is a very strong flavor but it is amazing and all I want you to do is just kind of pile it up on the platter like so. There are six slices in this package, and I know that seems ridiculous, but um, prosciutto, you get what you pay for. And when I'm making an antipasto platter, I do not skimp. Plus, it's Christmas, and we don't skimp. And there are, I think, two of us who will actually eat the prosciutto, and that would be my mother and myself. Like do you like it? Mm -hmm. I think it's also an acquired taste. Oh, let, let's see if you like it, honey. Now, if you don't know what prosciutto is, it is a salt cured ham. It is not a. Yeah, sissy doesn't get it. It is not smoked. It is. They take the. the pork leg, the, the leg of the pig, the hind mm. leg. Good. It is delicious. And they. They salt it, and then they hang it, and it shrinks to half of its size, and it, it takes a very long time. And now my fingers are all greasy, so prosciutto is greasy, as are all of these meats. But like I said, it's Christmas, right? We don't eat this all the time. This is sometimes food for everybody who's going to make a comment to me and say, oh, that's all fatty. Yep, it is. This is sweet capicola. Or, if you're a real Italian, you're going to go gabagool. That's what my mama always said. Gabagool. And 
And other than, you know, selecting what you're going to put on the tray, really, this is a no-brainer. Did she wait for Oops. I bet she is. And then my mom is going to bring some bread, and we're going to have this and some cheese, and this will be the beginning of our meal. Now let's see here. Put some of this calabrese salami. I may not end up putting all of that salami on here. I bought a selection. Oopsie. This is very nice. This is almost like a soppressetto. It does smell good. It smells really spicy. I can smell a lot of pepper in there. And it's very rustic. And that's what antipasto is supposed to be. It's supposed to be rustic. It's not supposed to be all froofy and perfect. And it's supposed to be what you like. So, let's do that. And then I think, let's see, let me do the Genoa salami. That's one of my favorites. Truth be told, I like all of these. I think that, need to cut it again. I think I, well, I mean, I grew up eating all this stuff, so I, it's not, it's not foreign to me. And I, my, one of my favorite sandwiches as a kid was a salami sandwich on Italian bread. I mean, how can you go wrong with that? Of course, if it's not one of your favorites, then I guess you can go wrong with it. But, but nothing on it. Just, just salami and bread, and then you smash it together. And that's how you eat it. Sometimes I think I should have been born Italian. Yeah, you do mm. like the Italian food, don't you? Mm -hmm. And these prepackaged meats, if you buy a good quality meat like Boar's Head, and some of these are Hormel, and they're actually not bad, um, you are not going to go wrong. And really, there's about eight ounces, as less than that, there's about less than a quarter of a pound, there's three and a half ounces in these packages of salami and calabrese and this chorizo. And that's really more than what you're going to need. This tray, once I get this all done, there will be six of us all together, and it could easily feed 12 once I get it done. Okay, 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 okay. Can you sit pretty? Can you sit? Can you tell me please? No, tell me please. Tell me nice. Show me, show me. Good girl. Okay. Okay. Sandy, sit pretty. Good girl. Sophie doesn't do Got to share. We got to share. Okay, Sophie, you ready? Okay. All right. All right. Now back to our regular programming. <laughs> we had to take a puppy break. All right. Now I'll put that aside. I'm going to mix my hands off just a little. Um, I think I'm not going to use this Tuscan salami. I do think, though, so. let's put some of this pepperoni out there. wait for you to steal pieces, right? They love it. Not bad, actually. Is it? That's good. A little dry. But... Well, pepperoni, you know. All right, so I have this. I've never tried this before, but it looked really good. So what I'm going to do... Yes, you know, I just cut right through that plastic, right? All right. And what I'm going to do with this is I'm just going to cut it in nice thick slices. And I will warn you, <laughs> when you're working with all this, please wipe your knife and your hands because it's going to be dangerous if you slip and uh, cut something or yourself or your dog. Get Obviously. down. Get down. <laughs> this is real life, folks. This is how we live. This is, 
You know, our dogs are part of our family, and so are our cats. And I know that some people do not enjoy the pets as much as we do, and that's okay. But I vow not to pull a Dan Aykroyd here. I'm not going to pretend to be Julia Child and cut off my finger. Cut the dickens out of your finger. <laughs> oh, I've cut the dickens out of my finger. Okay, enough of that. And I have uh, used these prosciutto rolls before with the mozzarella, and they're very, very nice. Excuse me. And there's some basil in the middle. So this is like a perfect bite. You know? A little mozzarella, a little prosciutto. And a little fresh basil right in the center. Oh, it smells really good too. All right, now, where are we going now? Okay, now what we're going to do is, this is when I start pulling out my, uh, my, my dishes. And I may actually rearrange at some point, you know, I may just go ahead and do this. I need to leave a, a place for the olives because I'm not putting those on here tonight. And it's okay if you have too much of this. You just put it in the fridge in a container and then refill it as your guests eat it. But for tonight, we're gonna go ahead and put it on the tray. And we're just gonna put that much on it. And then I'm gonna wrap this whole thing in plastic wrap and I'm gonna stick it in the fridge outside. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take some sweet cherry peppers and I'm just going to lay them around. Oh, these are so nice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just like that. That's what I had in the fridge. So. That one's too small. That one's too small? Mm -hmm. Okay, if you say so. And here... That's what I thought. Okay. Then we have some roasted red pepper. I won't see any of that since I already had some. And I just like to put it out here. Now, if some of these slices, see, look, that's huge. What I like to do is just put it into a more manageable bite because if someone picks that up, they're going to be uncomfortable with it. And you don't want your guests to be uncomfortable. You want them to feel at home. And when you get an antipasto platter out on the table, everybody will just dig in. But if they got a giant piece of pepper, they're going to feel embarrassed. And you don't want that. Of course, this is just for my family and, uh, you know, embarrassing moments make memories. All right. That's good. Then we're going to get our giardinetta. Hey. <laughs> Hang on. I got it. I don't need no help. And this just looks so pretty. And it's got little pearl onions in it. Those are my favorite part. 
And I like to try and keep it in a pile, but you know, it is what it is. Let's see. Let's get another raw. Uh... And this is going to be for our mushrooms. Excuse me, honey. Oh, here, I'll just use this one. These mushrooms, they smell amazing. Actually, you know what? I think I'm just going to put the mushrooms over here. That'll be fine. Rustic, remember? I'm going to put the artichoke hearts. I am kind of... Um, draining them a little as I put them out. And get some artichoke hearts here. And put those in here. And using the Italian dressing in these is really a huge save and help because you know you get the flavors you like oh god they smell so good and artichokes are somewhat bland you know when they're not seasoned up how do they taste excellent. yeah they smell excellent okay now the other thing where are you where did it go hmm. oh I put it back in the fridge that would be why I can't find it you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to just go ahead and put these olives on here because I want you to get the whole picture. Um, and I'm going to take my antipasto platter out about an hour before my guests arrive, maybe even an hour and a half. I'm just going to let this come to room temperature. And that way, everything will be at full flavor. Now, you, you never want to eat anything unless it's ice cream or fully intended to be eaten ice cold or piping hot. Everything always tastes better when it's had a chance to temper and come to room temperature. And then the last thing that we have to put on here is our roasted garlic. And then what you want to do with that is just kind of squeeze those cloves out like that. And when you bring that up to temp, like so, oh, you spread that on a little piece of toast or a cracker. Oh yeah, baby. Look at that. Okay, now I'm going to take a look at my platter and see if I want anything else. And I think I'm going to put just a... Get my spoon go here. Just a few more mushrooms on here. The other thing about an antipasto platter, for me at least, is I want it to look incredibly abundant. And I don't want anybody to feel like they shouldn't be able to help themselves to any part of it. And that there's plenty for everyone. The only other thing I think I am going to do is I think just because I want it to look a little fuller. I think I'm going to add some more of this caprese here. And like I said, you do this how you like. You don't have to do it on a giant platter. I find it to be really, really appropriate on a big platter. If you want to do it on a few smaller platters. If you want to put all of your wet things out in bowls, um, go for it. Do it your way. There is no wrong way to do an antipasto. 
The only wrong thing is not to have one because I think canned pasto is so special. You just want piles and mounds of this wonderful. Just like that. And there you have it. You move all of this stuff out of the way because I really want you to get a good view. Of that. I think that looks fantastic. And it smells wonderful and it's going to taste even better. I hope that you agree. So, there you have it. That's how I make my antipasto platter. This is not how I always do my hair. Today was very hot. We did a lot of running around and a lot of work, a lot of cleaning. So. I apologize for my appearance, but that's just the way it is, because it's the end of the day. But in any case, this antipasto platter, I really, really hope that you get a chance to run out and get a few things and put one together for yourself. If not for Christmas, then make a mental note and try and throw one together for New Year's Eve, because you will not regret it, I promise. So, antipasto platter, I hope you try it, I hope you love it, and until next time, Merry Christmas!